All right, everybody. So today we're going to talk about editing proxy files on Final Cut Pro. Um, I use proxy files in Final Cut Pro when I'm working with larger clips from various different cameras that is necessarily um, too much for my computer to handle. Um, if you don't create these proxy files and you try to edit with these large files that your camera creates, um, a lot of times you'll just spend majority of your time rendering the project, the application may quit, the computer could possibly crash. So you create a proxy file. A proxy file is a lower resolution copy of the image that your camera created um, that your computer uses to edit on the timeline. Um, while editing, you can switch from this proxy image back to the original footage to get a preview of what your footage actually looks like at that moment. Um, I also want to talk about the best exporting format for Final Cut Pro. Um, consumers consume differently. Some people watch on their phones, some people watch on their laptops. And then, of course, when you're exporting for a film festival, hopefully, um, you have to think about what it'll sound like in a larger theater versus, you know, what it may sound like on your headphones. So it's all basic, but it's very important, um, especially for new filmmakers. I never had anybody teach me this. I just had to learn from trial and error. So let's get started. All right, so let's just jump right into it. Um, obviously, in order to edit your media as proxy and or optimized media, first, you need to import um, your media to your, to your project. So after you've already opened up Final Cut and you've created your library and titled it, um, then from there, click File, Import Media. Once the uh, media import window pops up, Go ahead and make sure you have your SD card selected. It'll be listed here along the left. Um, sometimes when you, sometimes for Final Cut, um, for newer people or just in weird situations, it'll open up on, let's say, it'll let's say my name, Elias Marino, which is what I have like on my computer. Um, just make sure you go over here and click the device you want to import from, which is my SD card. My SD card is titled Lumix um, and select from there. So for this tutorial, I'm just going to select this clip of my nephew and this clip of my brother at school. So from here, this is where you choose uh, creating optimized and or proxy media for larger files that will be recorded off of, let's say, a camera like as a red camera. Um, you would need to create depending on your computer size, but obviously regardless of the size of your computer, it's best to do this so you don't strain the motherboard of your computer. Um, you go to transcoding and you select create optimized media as well as create proxy media. Um, what this does, when you put your mouse over, it'll tell you exactly what it does. Um, it creates copies of the media basically so your computer can edit it faster um, and you won't be sitting there rendering or the computer won't be glitching and skipping all day. So then from there, um, import selected, press the import selected button. So once you do that, you're going to see this sort of stopwatch um, item over here. Click on that. It'll show you how long basically is left until your media is done importing. My media is 70% so far. Um, and the transcoding and analyzing looks like it's at 100% almost, but it has to go through each clip create a proxy file and create an optimized media file for each clip. So it's going to start over. It's going to go to 100, go back to zero. Sometimes it won't even go all the way to 100. And it's going to do that for pretty much every clip. So while this, I know I said this in my last video, but while it is importing and transcoding, do not touch anything on your computer. Do not go to Google Chrome and start surfing the web. I honestly should close Google Chrome along with my calendar. Can't close QuickTime because that's how I'm recording this. Close the live uh, calendar in here. Allow your computer to have as much round space as possible to be able to complete the, the background task. So like I said, don't touch anything and wait until it's done. So once the media is done importing and it's done transcoding and analyzing, then from there, you are free to drag your clips onto the timeline. As you can see here, these other three clips, um, it has a triangle next to it, an exclamation mark next to it. And once you click on it, it says Miss missing proxy on a large red screen. This is because for this media, I did not import it as optimized or proxy media. Um, my viewfinder right now is only showing proxy media. So once I switch back to optimize, then 
you can see these original clips show. But for this, the sake of this project, um, I don't want to use optimized media. I only wish to use proxy media. So you go ahead and drag a clip onto the timeline, um, select an area that you would like to see. So let's say you wanted to start from here, you would press I, when it's in here, you would press O. Then from there, you drag the clip onto your timeline. Um, same thing with this other clip, select an area you would like to see, I, area you would like it to end, O, drag it onto the timeline. So just to show you guys an example, I'm going to switch back to um, original media. Once you switch back to original media and you go to the click the beginning and press the space bar for playback, you will see that the media does play, but it does not play as smooth as it should. As you can see in this clip, it's skipping. Um, it's not smooth at all. So that's because the computer is not able to handle the large files that um, I imported. So in order to edit efficiently and edit in a timely manner, I will switch the viewfinder back to uh, back to proxy media. So you click view on the viewfinder and you go back to proxy media. So then from there, let's say you want to do, you know, some type of editing on these clips. Um, I feel like this image is a little overexposed. So you go here to installed effects, this left button um, over here on the timeline right here. Um, click installed effects, um, obviously click, click to color, select the color board and drag it onto your clip. Go ahead and do it for both clips. So for this clip, um, you want, you're going to see the color board pop up right here. And then you click this triangle right here to open up the color board from there. Um, you know, you can click color set color saturation exposure um for this i just want to bring the exposure down a tad bit don't really wish to do much else um maybe bring the highlights down a little bit actually i'd rather bring them up let's leave it there for this clip same thing as well um you go under your effects you'll see color board click this triangle um and it'll come up as you know, color, saturation, exposure again. For this, I'm just gonna lower the exposure a little bit. I don't really wish to do much else. Um, and usually I do way more color correction than this. This is just a simple example to be able to show you guys. So then from there, you'll see these dots along the top of the clip, which means this needs to be rendered. So you go to modify, um, go ahead and select render all. So just as any other background test on Final Cut Pro, you'll see this Stopwatch, stopwatch, if you would say, um, up here to the left, you could click on that. Um, it'll say rendering. Whatever background test you're doing for this, it is rendering. 94% um, complete, um, and it's inching towards completion. Even with when you're using proxy files, it is still very important to allow your clips to render because if you don't, then your computer would just have a really difficult time, even though that they're proxy files. So go ahead and play this back to make sure that it's playing smoothly, just as I suspect it is playing smoothly. So from here, um, let's say I am happy with the video. Let's go. Let's say I just want to add some type of cross dissolve at the end. Um, click over here to install transitions, which is the button to the right of the install effects button. Um, and just drag your cross dissolve onto the end of the clip or, and or the beginning, wherever you want it. Um, let's say this even drag it into the middle so they'll fade together, modify, render all, allow that to render just like I said. Once that's done rendering, you can see the cross dissolves have been applied to the clips. Everything is playing smoothly. Now you go to your viewfinder and select optimize original media. Then from there, you'll see that all of this needs to be rendered again. Um, because your computer rendered the proxy files, it did not render the original media. So you select modify again, render all, once again, allow it to render. So once that's done rendering, um, now if you're happy with your project and what you cut together, um, if you want to call this a project, um, now it's time to export your project. Which a lot of people get confused on how they should export their project, which, at what export format they should use. So I want to kind of go over that. So you would go to file um, and share. Then from share, you select master file. 
Once that opens, um, your exporting window will open. Um, here's the info, it just kind of gives you a rundown of your project you see from beginning to end if you just kind of scan your mouse over it. Um, then you would click the settings tab. Now, let's say you're exporting um, just a quick, for this video in particular, it's just a quick YouTube video. Um, the resolution doesn't really matter for this um, if I'm just throwing it up on YouTube really quick. So uh, there's no reason to select any of these ridiculously large export formats such as Apple ProRes, um, 444, 422, really anything. I'm just going to go ahead and select H.264. Um, you, and you can see the size difference over here at the bottom right corner. You see H.264 is 322 megabytes. Um, let's say you select Apple ProRes 422. It jumps all the way up to two gigabytes. Um, you can go all the way to the top to Apple ProRes 4444 XQ. And this small clip jumps to 9.3 gigabytes, which is ridiculous. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and select H.264. Now, um, since this was shot for, it was shot and intended for Apple ProRes, the computer will take longer to export it to an H.264. However, when you're uploading it to YouTube, Vimeo, or wherever you're uploading it to, um, it will upload a, a whole lot faster. Um, versus if you select Apple ProRes 422, when you're uploading it to YouTube or Vimeo, it'll take a whole lot longer. Now, let's say this let's say this project was a film and you got into a film festival and they're playing this film in a large theater um, of some sort. You would not want to select H.264 because this Kodak um, compresses your image down to a lower resolution so it can be a smaller file. Um, if you are if you are exporting for a larger theater um, and in my case, my camera, I shot for Apple ProRes 422, you would select that. Um, now, when you export as Apple ProRes 422, even though the file is a, lot, is a lot bigger, for my media in particular, it exports faster because that's what it was shot for and the computer has to do less work when um, it's exporting. But if I were to upload that project onto YouTube or Vimeo or whatever, it would take a whole lot longer for that video to upload and process for it to get to full resolution. So like I said, for this, I'm just going to export it as H.264 because I'm putting it on YouTube and that's all it needs. Once you export the project, if you are to look at um, the H.264 and the Apple ProRes side by side on your laptop, honestly, you will not notice much of a difference. You might notice a slight color difference. Um, obviously, the Apple ProRes 422 exports with a lot more information than the H.264 does. Um, on your laptop, the difference is very minimal. You, honestly, you cannot tell. Um, and most people, when they're viewing your project, if, you put it, if you're putting it onto YouTube, most I would say about 80% of the people, if not 90% of the people consuming your video or your project um, are going to be watching on their phones. Some may be watching on their laptops um, and some may be watching on their TV. So honestly, for most TVs and most phones, an H.264 is well enough resolution um, to impress people. That's it for today. Like I said, it's simple, but it's very important, especially for new filmmakers. Um, any type of professor or mentor or even people on YouTube tend to skip over small things like this that in turn are very important. So um, like I said, I hope you all learned something today. Make sure you like and comment whatever type of video tutorial you would like to see next from Final Cut, Premiere, um, Photoshop, whatever you would like to see. And make sure you subscribe.